Hey everybody, this is John, and this is John's Long Box, and today is another special treat. I went and I dug out my copy of Fantastic Four number one. Okay, as you can see, it's not in the best condition. This was all I could afford at the time. I got a, a promotion at work, and when I got my tax return back that year, I treated myself to uh, Fantastic Four. Okay, yes, this is the actual cover of Fantastic Four number one. This is officially the first Marvel comic. Um... Although in the in the 40s you had Marvel Comics that was a title of, of of a comic in the Timely Company. The Timely was the name of the company. Marvel Comics was was uh, the name of the comic, and that was debuted the Human Torch. <coughs> and this is when and then Timely became Atlas, and then Atlas became Marvel. See so who you are. Just this classic. This classic cover with mole man's cre uh, monster and like i said just broke all the conventions <coughs> pardon me for coughing um the superheroes didn't have costumes that they were bickering they didn't get along so this was uh stanley trying to do something different okay his ad muscle man ads okay uh trying to look down here I'm trying to be it's very uh flaky i don't want to 19 copyright 1961 okay i always thought it was 1962 so there you go by keenan publishers company what's his name all right and who we are and here they are reed richards ben Grimm, susan storm johnny storm and then that little stanley and jack kirby the fantastic four that's Reed Richards. He had a, a, a like a flare gun that would write the words. Well, it, later on, it just became a four in the air, and that would summon everybody to get together. And Sue Storm, at this point, she's called the Invisible Girl. And you know, doors are opening and coffee cups are falling down. Everybody's free. again. They were trying to walk the line between a horror comic monster comic and a superhero comic she gets in the car the money's floating the cab driver drives away you know this was at the beginning this is before they had all the uh, transportation and everything is ben Grimm takes off his jacket he's a thing look, look how lumpy he is and it looks like he's wearing a dirty diaper okay of course you have to walk through the door and shatter everything when you know the cops are coming shooting at him and the original for the first 10 issues or so of the fantastic four they were really playing around with their personalities the, the thing was very angry and bitter i guess you could understand that he he went from handsome ben Grimm in, into into this misshapen creature and uh reed richards was kind of like almost sinister and then johnny storm was happy-go-lucky goofy and then, of course, the uh, Invisible Woman, all she did, or the Invisible Girl, as she was called, all she was was, was she got captured and fainted, you know, and, and things changed. Here's Johnny Storm, you know, working on his hot rods. He sees the four. You see, there it is. There's the four. And he bursts into flame. I, I love how the, the he, he, it's more, what, what's the word? I don't know. But he, un, un, uncontrollable, like, he looks like a an actual flame from a torch. He melts the whole car. You know, hot enough to melt steel, but not hot enough to hurt that guy. And he goes flying. I always said that the Human Torch. He he also, uh, in order to fly, because torches don't fly, so he he generates thrust and you know kinetic. I'm just being really careful with these pages. I, I'm sure you can understand. Okay, here's. People, what's going on? Scrambling. There's something identified flying objects and they're flying at the torch. He's just scragging all the thing. And then they, they make a point to show the para, the parachutes, show you that the pilots aren't damaged. And a heat seeking missile coming after him. And whoop, his hands got it and throws it in the water. And Johnny Storm, he can only stay on fire for a limited time at first. You know, the, 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 they're, they're rookies with their powers now. So he exhausted himself and his flame cut out while he was still flying. And then Reed Richards catches him and brings him in. And he's 
All right, telling them what we got to do. Page eight. And then what do they got to do? They got to re go. They got to go over their origin. So here, you know, it was a good way to get you in to the story. Showed you their powers, stuff like that. Get you a little uh, interested in in the characters. What's how they get like this? You know. And now, now here's the backstory. Uh, let's sneak it on the base. He he de he's developing a. Uh, a rocket. Remember, this is 1961. They're going to the moon. They they changed it to uh, going to space and then beyond the solar system. Then a warp drive. You know, they constantly like. Remember Iron Man, and his when he was trying to get out of Vietnam, he was trapped by the Viet Cong, and then they changed it. You know, you kind of got to update the stories. So otherwise, you know, who cares about the moon? And the regular people went to the moon a couple of years later. So here they are. The race. The the conditions are right. Ben Grimm was their pilot. Sue Storm was like their fin financier, I guess, because her father, Jonathan Storm, financed everything and she handled everything for him. And then Johnny Storm was, was her kid brother. Kid, you know, you got to bring a kid brother. He must have been like 15 or 14. So everything's working all right. And then, I tack, 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 these cosmic rays hit them and penetrate them. And he's, Johnny Storm is burning up. The, the thing. He, he feels heavy. He can't move. Uh, the missile lands. And here they are. You know, in their blue astronaut uniforms. And I feel strange. Susan, she, she transforms, turns invisible. Oh, no. What happened to her? Oh, my God. What if she never gets visible again? And then she turns visible. Want to buy some shoes? Okay. And she's like, what's, what's going on? And he's like, oh, don't worry. And he's, your lug, you didn't have enough shielding on there. And they're ready to fight. And also, I remember this. I've always thought it was funny as a kid. And he turns into some sort of thing. And that's exactly what it is. Reed Darling, he's turned into some sort of thing. He's strong as an ox. Reed Darling, bap. It was always played up that he was in love with Susan Storm, too. And... Later on, he's like, you turned me into this. That's why you put me up front, and I got the most radiation, and I'm the most deformed, you know. Like, and he, he stretches out of the way and wraps around him. His his fever breaks out. He bursts into flames, starts flying, set, setting the forest on fire. And he's just like, we got to use our powers. We, gotta, we got more power than humans ever possessed. Don't make a speech. You want to use that power to help humanity? And then they always have this, the three hands, and Ben's took the longest to join uh i always thought ben was the, like the heart and soul of the fantastic four he, he later on became like the most compassionate and i think it's because uh i always call it the pinocchio there's always like hellboy or or the thing or I'm, I'm trying to remember or, or uh atomic robo i don't know if you know that but character but the, the non-human character who's always trying the hardest to be human like pinocchio wanted to be a boy so i, I call those characters pinocchios and i have a soft spot for pinocchios they just they, they end up being the most humane and the most compassionate because they lost their humanity and they're trying they're trying to like Johnny Storm kind of takes it for granted because he got a cool power and he's still good looking and he can still live a normal life or is the thing mourns for everything he lost the, the, the Ben Grimm the thing is one of my favorites you know he's up there with Superman as, as one of my favorite superheroes the Fantastic Four meet the Mole Man now that's not the Mole Man okay we'll meet the Mole Man so uh he's talking about things have been buildings and stuff like that have been pulled into these sinkholes here's old ads and they're like really we're just watching on the Geiger or whatever it's called uh, I can't think of the seismograph we're going to predict in rumble roar and the hole just collapses in the ground he's the soldiers are trying to get out and what happened the entire it's, it's installation it's collapsing so the mole man is just pulling like scientific research stations underground what is that and then i always like these hands and uh, like i said in another video that uh marvel w at the time was doing gigantic monsters and stuff like that so this was them hedging their bets let's put gigantic monsters but we'll have a team of specialists to, to deal with them so this armored creature comes out of the ground and again that's not the mole man so like okay the seismograph this is where we got to go 
Ben's like, I'll fly the ship, you know, so they, they take a plane, and they, they land on this island, uh, Monster Island, yep, Monster Isle, okay, I always remember they had, like, a, a face, and this mouth was a cave, and that was the entrance to Subterranea, where the Mole Man ruled, and they land, you know, again, they don't have uniforms on them, just a ball cap, you know, and the eye, this, this Cerebus-looking creature comes out, quick turn invisible okay so she turns invisible he makes a lasso out of his arm grabs it and tosses it into the water and then sinkhole opens up they fall down parachute where are we if only we had light you know and then they get passed out from the bright the light is so bright they actually pass out and then they wake up with these suits on and here the valley of diamonds and that's the source of uh, the Mole Man's wealth. He's able to trade with unscrupulous people and get whatever he needs. And that, my friends, is the Mole Man. Who I think, if they ever made a live-action movie, Marlon Brando would have been perfect. Later, Marlon, Marlon Brando. Okay. The Mole Man's secret. So she's invisible. She didn't get captured. And, a, and one of the creatures comes out. And the thing, look out, Sue. Let me handle this. L look at this. He's like bullet-shaped wide waist and he f he fights and he wasn't that strong at the beginning you know he was you know he could lift a car and stuff like that but you know he's not like lifting airplanes and stuff he got strong matter of fact all the all the fantastic four got stronger all, all over the time you know that seems to be like a problem with with superheroes is, is power creep you know i i remember when one of the detective when i first started reading batman batman got beat by a, a private detective in, in a fight and it was no big deal Batman wasn't the world's greatest you know fighter he was the world's greatest detective so he had to outsmart th this and it was like a paunchy guy and now gee Batman could could beat up a whole stadium full of ninjas you know well the thing started out like he could lift a car and throw a car and now now he could lift airplanes and Sue Storm didn't have force fields and now she has force fields and she's like a you know martial artist and you know and the human torch he could fly and he would his flame would extinguish after like 30 or 40 seconds now he now he could go like supernova and just melt anything so he, you know now they're meeting the uh the mole man and he's explaining his story he kept asking out women and they didn't like him he went to get jobs and they didn't like him you know he was ugly and whatever look at that face how how you wearing a mask so he decided to go away and, when you know when you get rejected three times when she, when she says no to you and this guy won't hire you and this guy asks you if you are but your only choice is to go to antarctica and, and go to freeze to death and from antarctica he found a cave that led under the ground and while he was underground he he uh was blind because it was total darkness and he developed a radar sense and then he developed the ability to to control these uh these creatures look so he's short and pudgy you know, and that he's he's beaten Reed Richards with, with a stick. You know, that's impressive. Beat Reed Richards with a stick, and now he's explaining how he could travel anywhere through the the world through the, through these maps through through the through the Earth subterranea, and then the things like I heard enough. So he pulls on this thing, and out comes uh, I I wish I could did I say the name of it, the creature? Giganto is Submariner's giant monster. So I don't. Not, and then the human torch bursts into flames and he gets out of this constricting suit starts stretching and all the monsters come out but the monsters are f afraid of fire and the human torch uses his power to it, dig a hole and they fly away just as the uh, military oh no no he destroyed the island but of course he didn't really destroy the island because we see it and they're just like, that's the kind of people that we have to, uh, that we teamed up to, to deal with. And if you've seen the, uh, the, the Incredibles, you know, the Underminer was definitely a uh, homage to uh, the Mole Man, just as the Incredibles themselves were, were the Fantastic Four. I mean, Mr. Incredible had the strength, uh, Violet turned invisible and had the force fields, Elastic Girl. The only thing is race, the little blonde kid, he didn't turn into fire, he, he ran fast. So I always say The Incredibles is the best Fantastic Four movie. And here's the back cover. And looking for people who like to draw. So I'm being very 
careful with this. So here you go. This was the Fantastic Four. This is, again, not the best condition, but it was the best condition I could afford at the time. There was another one right next to it at the, at the store that was like three times as much. And uh, I, I just, I just want to put this. I'm just happy to own it. Okay, uh, so I have pretty much a complete Fantastic Four collection from issue 10 on. So I have one and then 10 and up. So someday I'd like to get two to nine. All right. That's the Fantastic Four. I hope you enjoy this. This is, oh, and you see it's Comic Code Authority. I hope you enjoy this. I This is a comic I, you can understand that I very rarely take out of the box, but I thought I'd showcase this. All right, see you around. Please leave some comments. Tell me if there's anything you'd like to see, any any improvements in the channel. Um, uh, I got some plans for the future, but I, I got to get some work done. I got my... Uh, I got my room taped up and I'm going to be painting it over the weekend and starting building the shelves. So let's hear it for that. All right. Bye-bye.